In this example, I'm going to show you how you can use Core to edit your graphic images. And these would be this is a vector file, so that we're going to edit it. You see, when you bring the uh, image in, Core breaks it down into its layers, and as this was originally designed for a screen print, it wasn't designed for embroidery. The graphics are not quite efficient for embroidery. As you can see, this white border stitch that we would use as a border is actually a massive fill area underneath, and so is the orange, etc. Okay, and also the sequencing is maybe not the best. In any case, what we're going to do is I'm going to use Core's built-in editing features to trim this uh, image up to make it better for embroidery. So first thing we're going to do is select the white background and the orange area. And I'm going to right click and then I'm going to go to shaping and then I'm going to tell it to trim. Now what that's going to do is it's going to convert that white background into a border stitch. It combined the white and the orange and it basically cut out all the white that is underneath the orange. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine the blue and that's, as you can see, the, the artist wasn't too concerned with uh, sequence. They're kind of all over the place. So I'm going to click on this blue and this blue. And I'm going to weld these two together. What that's going to do is make a common outline. And then I'm going to add this one into those two. You can only weld uh, two objects at a time. So there we go. So now I have a common outline. And I have my outline and I have a big blob orange. What I'm going to do now is cut out the orange. So I'm going to select the orange and then the blue and right click shaping and once again trim. And as you can see in the object list we have a nice upper and lower shape. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is let's start making stitches. We can uh, let's convert this to complex fill. And what I want to do is I don't like these jump stitches in between here because of the sequence and the angles. So I'm just going to split it back apart. And that makes two separate blocks, which are perfectly fine with me. I'm going to add a running stitch in between these two blocks to bridge them so I don't have to have a trim because I'm going to come back over the top of the blue anyway. So I'm going to right click. And I'm going to say digitize path after this one. And I'm going to use a running stitch. And I'm just going to go from here to there and stitch it. Now you see I have a complex fill, a running stitch, and a complex fill. But let's take a look at this complex fill running stitch combination. All right. This is my end point and my start point. Let's say my start point is here. My end point is, I don't know, I'm just going to move it there. Okay. And then this one, or sorry, the running stitch, it's pretty much where I laid it. And then the complex fill here, if we check, it is, well, here's the end point and the start point down here. Not very efficient because it's going to end here, trim, move down to do the running stitch, which is defeating my whole purpose. But if I click this, it selects the whole color. And I can click right here, optimize entry and exit points. And Core will move all the entry exit points for me, so I don't have to worry about that. You see, it moved my endpoint to there. It moved my start point endpoint of my running stitch, and it moved my start point endpoint of my last complex fill. So I'm I'm happy. Now I can just click here, this blue, and I'm going to right click convert to complex fill. So now I have my complex fill and my border. Uh, when you trim, it trims off the lines pretty much exactly where they were drawn, so we don't have much compensation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add comp to the orange, both blocks at one time. We're going to say push or pull. We're going to add a percentage. Let's go 106% apply. And that gives me a little bit of overlap, so I don't have to worry about any of that. All right, now um, maybe I want to change my stitch angle on this. It's just a matter of clicking and dragging. 
you see. And all I have to do is let's do the uh, flower. So I'm going to scroll down and find my flower artwork right here. You see, select that, convert to satin. And just for good measure, I'm going to optimize entry and exit just in case. It more than likely did it all fine, but let's just do it that way. And then the little yellow dot is here, and we're going to convert it to complex fill. And now all that's left is the text, and we can drop that in from the keyboard, or you can digitize it or whatever, but you know how to do that. In any case, um, now we have to deal with the border. I guess the choice is ours, since there is no real border here, do we want to sew the top and the bottom, or do we want to maybe make a unified border around it all, or, or how? Uh, at this point, we can click here and say convert to satin, but now you see that the border runs behind this blue, and it will cause quite a bump right through here. You, it's hard to see, uh, change this color to a much darker color so we can see it. You see it runs behind there, which we don't necessarily want that. Uh, what we can do is we can split it out. We can take this little knife tool and go chick and draw two little lines. I think I'll go ahead and do the other side while we're at it. And then right click and it's split these into separate blocks. I know it doesn't look like it, but if we go ahead and break it apart, you'll see that indeed it is separate blocks and we can take that out. So that one and that one. And let's go back and change that back to white so that it looks pretty close. And we'll just type white. There it is. And we'll zoom in. I could go back and do the digitize path and put a running stitch in here if I'd like, just like I did on the um, other side. That's pretty much it.